Hey everybody, this is Michelle from Florida Keys Birding and Wildlife and I'm doing a video this evening on something that you may be wondering with our current situation here in Florida with a hurricane heading our way. You might have asked yourself before, you know, what do wildlife and birds and reptiles do during a hurricane. Do they hide somewhere? Do they go underground? Do they go for higher ground? Do they leave? What do they know? You know, how do they know? So um, I'm going to do a little quick video on that and I'm going to talk about birds, reptiles, and a little bit about other wildlife and specifically key deer which are native to Big Pine Key, No Name Key, um, that area in the lower keys, and they're only found there. They're not found anywhere else in the United States, so a lot of people may wonder, you know, how did the key deer survive during Irma? So we're going to talk a little bit about that as well. So let's get right into it. What do birds do during a hurricane? So there's three strategies on um, that birds use to deal with a storm. Research has shown that birds can hear infrasound, whatever that is, <laughs> and they're sensitive to barometric pressure changes, so they know when a storm is heading their way. If they are migratory birds, they may leave earlier. So some birds have been known to fly ahead of, into, or through a storm. Studies have shown that some birds fly into a storm and they get stuck in the eye. Some make it out on the other side, some get relocated thousands of miles away, and some do die inside. So another scenario that happens sometimes is that some birds will shelter in a place and they'll hang on for dear life <laughs> in thick brush or on the leeward side of trees, you know, the side I guess that would be away from the wind or something like that. So since trees and shrubs reduce wind speeds, it'll help to keep the birds more dry and they're used to perching really tightly when they're relaxed or asleep, so they're better able to hang on. So um, they'll seek shelter anywhere like for some, you know, like something that had happened a couple years ago with Hurricane Harvey, um, there was an injured Cooper's Hawk and he actually went inside somebody's car and he refused to leave. So, I mean, they'll go anywhere that they can to seek shelter sometimes. Um, they'll also seek shelter in nest holes and inside tree cavities. So, while a hurricane is at sea, Ocean dwelling birds will actually seek shelter inside the eye. That's got to be pretty interesting <laughs> and crazy. And they'll just keep flying inside the eye until the storm passes over the coast where they will take refuge on land. This is one reason why you'll see a lot of birders flock to an area where there's been a big hurricane because there'll be lots of birds there that probably aren't really supposed to be there. <laughs> So, how do hurricanes affect migratory birds? What do you do if you're a migratory bird? So they can basically be carried off by the eye of the hurricane and possibly back to where they started. Um, apparently this is called the Bueller phenomenon, just like what happens to seabirds. So birds will get trapped in the bands of the storm where the wind takes them and they can be carried hundreds of miles or more um, off of their intended course. This happened during Hurricane Sandy, so there were some birds that were migrating through and they were taken all the way back to Maine or Newfoundland. If migratory birds survive the hurricane, it will continue on its journey once the storm has passed. So it'll just, you know, stop, hunker down, and keep on trucking <laughs> off to where it's planning to go. Um, the only problem is, is that once they get to where they're going, they're faced with a decreased food source if a hurricane has decimated their Caribbean wintering grounds prior to that. So if they survive and get thrown somewhere else though, they'll still find their way home. So let's say they get thrown off a hundred miles or, you know, there were some that were taken all the way to Europe apparently that I read about and they still found their way back to where they meant to go. So they figured out I guess. 
I don't know how they do that, but that's pretty cool. So, what about lizards, you may ask? Um, basically, lizards will hunker down and hold on for dear life. That's generally what they'll do. You might think that they would hide inside tree roots or inside of, you know, a hole of a tree or something like that, um, but storm surge can make this too dangerous sometimes, so their best shot really is to just hold on tight. <laughs> There was a study done um, that lizards actually would still be lounging at a tropical storm force wind and at hurricane force winds um, of 102 miles per hour they were still hanging on but at 108 they weren't able to hang on anymore. Um, the study showed that the ones that survive storms have 6 to 9 percent bigger toe pads uh, and significantly longer front limbs and smaller back limbs compared with the populations who don't always survive. There was a study done, I believe it was before and after Irma, on lizards in the Virgin Islands and that's how they found this out. They did a study and took a survey of the ones that were there before the storm, they left and then they came back to see the ones that were still there. And that's what they found, so studies show that lizards with bigger toe pads in the islands, um, oh, oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. They showed that the bigger toe pad lizards survived, but they also showed in studies that um, island lizards have bigger toe pads generally than mainland lizards. So if you think about it, they've kind of adapted to that. Those are the ones that, um, you know, survived and then they mated with other ones that survived with the bigger toe pads and then they have babies that have the bigger toe pads and those are the majority of the ones that survive, so survival of the fittest. <laughs> So what about key deer? Key deer may be small, but the little guys are tougher than you might think. After Hurricane Irma, wildlife managers at the key deer refuge determined that nearly all of the key deer survived. There was just 21 that died from storm related causes. So how does a 60 pound animal that's not even 3 feet tall stand up to 6 feet of seawater and storm surge? Nobody really knows for sure, but since the keys were evacuated, um, those residents who chose to stay obviously weren't focused on observing wildlife behavior. So what we do know is that these deer routinely swim through and between the islands, so they're no strangers to water and swimming. Um, but because Irma wasn't the first hurricane to swirl over the, thir the Florida Keys in thousands of years, the key deer have been there, they've likely become experts at riding out the storm. Another article that I read said that the key deer swim well, even in, stor even in a storm surge situation, but not in 130 mile per hour winds. So there's no typical hurricane response with key deer. With Hurricane Irma, it was said that they imagined that they did everything from hiding behind garages to hunkering down in bunches of vegetation to running wildly through the streets, which worked out well for some, but poorly for others. Some were killed by falling debris and things like that. If you're in the eye of a hurricane and your wildlife, it's kind of like Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. It would be like anybody just kind of being out there in the wind and hoping for the best. So let's talk about some general wildlife that will thrive after a hurricane. So according to the National Wildlife Federation, um, they provide a list of animals and plants which do well out of hurricanes. One are orchids because they spread their seeds um, due to the strong winds. Uh, the next one is gopher frogs and spade foot toads. They use the heavy rainfall to breed. Raccoons, since they're scavengers, they find new food sources and all the hurricane debris. Um, black bears and ground birds, they can benefit from the increased ground shelter created by the downed trees and the brush. So I guess the debris everywhere, you know, it helps them to hide and do their thing. Um, wildlife that does badly after a hurricane, um, that's going to be endangered species, you know, for obvious reasons. Um, migratory birds because they're blown off course. Um, sometimes younger, weaker birds are separated from the flock and, you know, it can take them a while to get where they need to go and 
assimilate to their new habitat. Coral reefs, obviously, you know, rainfall will wash away sediment and pollute the coral reefs and hurricanes can break them apart and they can block algae, you know, sunlight for an algae can grow. Um, squirrels don't do good after a hurricane. Um, animal rescuers get a big influx of baby squirrels tossed from their nests during hurricanes. Sea turtles, their nests can be washed out. We saw this with Irma. This did happen from the beach erosion. Fish, um, scrub jays, that's another type of bird. Beach mice, deer, of course, uh, red cockaded woodpeckers, mussels and oysters, and marine mammals. So wildlife that can sometimes do well and then sometimes do bad. Um, you never know. One is burrowing owls. They can use their burrows to protect themselves, but sometimes the burrows get blocked by debris and they can't get out, or they're flooded from heavy rains or storm surge, obviously. Native plants, um, they're adapted better to hurricanes than non-native plants. Um, and native plants can boost, uh, can get a boost when non-native uh, are damaged by the hurricanes, so they can kind of beat them out for territory. Snakes are another one. Snakes can burrow and get through a hurricane easily, but other times their burrows become flooded or a pet non-native snake gets released during the storm and then they compete for food. So, you know, that's kind of a, I guess that would happen by accident if there was some kind of a situation. So, so that was a little bit of information about wildlife, like, you know, birds, reptiles, and various types of wildlife that can be affected by storms, what they do during the storm, where they go, um, and what can happen afterwards. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I thought it was appropriate for right now, especially as we have a major hurricane <laughs> headed our way. I remember I wondered during Irma what happened to the wildlife, what they do, and where they go. So I just want to share this information with everybody. Thanks. Have a good day.